Kien dobre. Good evening to everybody. This is a new video interview for Spanish newspaper Navarra Confidencial. At this time, we are hosting a journalist from Poland whose name is Lucas Barcetta, who works at the newspaper directly. So uh, I hope I pronounce it fine. If, if not so, <laughs> correct. Thanks for attending. Good evening, and the right pronunciation would be do rzeczy. Okay. Dziękuję bardzo. De nada. The, the reason of this interview is digging up in some topics and issues of interest regarding the current situation in Poland, not only when it comes to the so-called epidemic situation. To begin with the conversation, it could be interesting to focus on Polish right wing. For Western conservatives, traditionalists, and paleo libertarians, Poland is seen as an example when it comes to social issues. Some sort of defense of religion, family, and tradition. Nevertheless, the nuanced vision is virtually unknown, contrary to what may happen at the US, which is widely known worldwide. The first thing regards the ruling party. Right-wingers in general see with interest that Pravo is probably both is one of the most supported and important parties in Poland. It seems that well, sorry, it said that Poles have a conservative and right-wing government that tells the difference regarding the rest of Europe, especially the Western side. Not only Spanish, where we have a postmodern dictatorship, but also other countries like Portugal, France, Germany, and the Netherlands. Nevertheless, Kaczynski and Morawiecki's party seems to be very interventionist in economy. I know that some Polish free marketers dare to say that is not so less interventionist as the communist P Z P R. For example, it tends to raise taxes, keep pharmacological regulations, offer new subsidies, not only to family, but also to qual industri industries and also the same interest 
in COVID-19 police state that socialists from other parts of the West, Joe Biden, Pedro Sánchez, Emmanuel Macron, and so on. That's your time. Well, um, it is quite often that when you look from a distance at another country, you can't really see some details uh, which, when known to you, would probably change your view on the situation. And uh, to be quite honest, being... Uh, a conservative liberal, I would never call Law and Justice Party a conservative party. Uh, and this is uh, quite common among conservative liberals here in Poland, that Law and Justice Party is called Patriotic Socialist Party. Because if we take a closer look at um, five years of their rule, we would see that there is really quite few conservative um, features about these five years and uh, lots of socialist feature, interventionist features, um, uh, lots of very etatist decisions, um, both as far as the economy is concerned and also as the um, personal liberties are concerned. Uh, so, first of all, we have to understand that it is really quite difficult to define what is actually right-wing and what is left-wing. These notions of left and right um, are not very clear right now. But I would definitely not say that Law and Justice is a conservative party, I would definitely say that they are on the patriotic side, but at the same time they are a left-wing party. And I would always say, and I say that, and I write that, write that, that we are ruled, Poland has been ruled for the last five years by socialist party. Of course, this is a different kind of socialism that the socialism you have in Spain, for example. Nevertheless, this is still socialism. Um, if you ask me exactly, or if you ask me about examples, I would say that first of all, we have um, had more regulations concerning our personal life through those five years than ever before. Our Polish state has unfortunately become definitely over-regulated by PIS. And this is very um, obvious if you take a look at Mr. Kaczynski's views, who was always state-centrist, who has always said that the state is the most important thing, uh, not local communities or individual liberties or individuals, but the state. Nothing outside the state, or as little outside the state as possible. Um, so, first of all, we have overregulation, definitely. Then we have a, a very clear um, economic steering towards state-owned enterprises. Uh, we have a few state-owned enterprises here in Poland, quite big ones, and the biggest one, I think, or the most politically important one is Orlen, which is our um, uh, uh, petrol producing enterprise. We have uh, here in Central Europe quite a big network of Orlen petrol stations. Um, and this enterprise has just recently bought a network distributing press. So this is an example of expanding a state-owned enterprise, which previously uh, dealt with a completely different sphere of economy, which are um, uh, uh, petrols um, uh, and filling stations. Uh, and now it has expanded into press. 
which is a completely different thing, distributing press, which is a completely different thing. And their plans for the future are also very, very rich and far-reaching, far beyond the question of, of, of petrols or refineries on, or, or such things. Um, then we have something which, in my opinion, is completely contrary to a conservative attitude towards regulations, towards the state. Because being a conservative, you should always, in my opinion, ask yourself if you, if you see a problem, uh, whether there is already perhaps a solution for this problem present, if there is a solution in regulations, why this solution, solution is not effective, whether we can perhaps correct this solution, if someone thinks about limiting personal liberties of citizens, a conservative should ask himself if this is absolutely necessary and should do it only if it is absolutely necessary. Uh, in general, a conservative party ruling a state should always look at every side and every argument about regulating the reality, regulating citizens' lives. Uh, and this should be, in fact, the last resort if it comes to solving any problems. And Law and Justice Party has a completely different attitude. If there is a problem, they immediately vote through some kind of regulation without analyzing, without uh, analyzing costs for citizens, for civil liberties, and so on and so on. And afterwards, it usually uh, occurs that this solution that they voted through is ineffective, is stupid, um, uh, has a completely opposite effects to those expected. And we have seen that so many times um, since, uh, since spring, since the epidemic began. Uh, there were un uncountable, in fact, solutions and regulations voted by uh, the majority in the Polish parliament which are completely contrary to each other, which uh, don't add up, which uh, make citizens uh, uh, look completely stupid, which are completely ineffective. Um, and then they are corrected, of course. Some are corrected, some are not. But this is something that uh, hardly can be called a conservative policy. So, in fact, looking from inside, looking from here, I would never say that we have a conservative party. And there are also some other aspects or issues which um, make or should make one ask himself whether Law and Justice Party is a conservative one. Uh, just a few months ago, we had... Um, a project in the parliament uh, called uh, Five Points for Animals. And this project was personally very dear to Jarosław Kaczyński, who is an animal lover. But the problem is with that project is that this project was a completely leftist one. It was a project that could be signed by any left-wing Green Party in Europe. It was not a conservative project at all. Uh, and uh, as I said, it was so dear to Mr. Kaczynski that it almost led to a breakup in his party because he was so decisive about uh, forcing this project through uh, the parliament. So summing this all up, I would say that, yes, Law and Justice Party is a, a, a patriotic one, but it is not a conservative one. And as far as economy is concerned and fiscal issues are concerned, um, state-owned enterprises are concerned, it is definitely on the left wing. It's true that politicians like Kaczynski and Morawiecki, even Duda, are far, are far from other prototypes represented 
by Bolsonaro, Ted Cruz, or Mike Pink. When it comes to economics, there's a considerable interventionist. Besides, we should recall that there are many great and kinds of socialism, as Hans Hermann Hoppe pointed out at theory of capitalism and socialism. Nevertheless, it's also true that in social and moral affairs, they are not so courageous as we may expect. For example, in relation to the convention, well, to the Istanbul Convention, peace reject to withdraw the state straightforward from it despite promise of Signev Sobro and Judas commitment with voters. This topic became relevant not only because of the social conservative mindset of many Polish citizens, but also to the to the steady and constant work of Ordo Juris Daritic Center. Only the Confederatza says something about withdrawing from it. Please now says that it will depend on the Constitutional Court. Moreover, if we look at the abortion law, law it's true that along the previous legislature, that party blocked many attempts of reform that would have increased the legal, the legal protection of unborn children. Moreover, the recent sentence of constitutional court has not been published at the set, daily set of law process. The valid team is once again the they are afraid of the minority leftist hard pressure, which is fueled by foreign lobbies and the European. I try to me yeah. that yes, yes, I can I can hear you now again. Good. I try to mean that when it comes to abortion, peace has treason the conservative majority along the last, well, the previous legislature, many of their MPAs did not support legislative reforms at the same the police law chamber. Moreover, they wanted to evade some responsibilities by establishing an excess of parliamentary commissions. But not only that, the October 22 constitutional court sentence which favors the protection of unborn children with disabilities has not been published at state official documents. It seems that 
the party is afraid of the leftist harassment in spite of the fact that it's not as majority as in countries like Germany, Spain, or, or France is somehow difficult to understand. Well, <laughs> let, 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 me, let me explain. Um, the, uh, I would say uh, a very characteristic and special feature of, of the Polish political life, it is not unique for Poland, but, well, I think it is not the case of Spain, for example is that the ruling party is uh, concentrated and focused on the views and political needs and political visions of just one man. Everything revolves around Jarosław Kaczyński. So there is virtually almost no, or there was virtually almost no discussion whatsoever within the party what to do about some very pressing for some people, for some members of PIS party issues, like, for example, the question of abortion, because Jarosław Kaczyński didn't want it to happen. Um, if you take a look, if you take a closer look at his political way of life since the beginning of the 90s, you would see that he was never very fierce, I would say, or very passionate about such issues like uh, protection of unborn children. He was always rather a center politician who was for some, I would say, not uh, ideological, but pragmatic reasons rejected by the establishment. And when he was rejected in the 90s by the establishment, he decided to build his own establishment. And what we can see now is Kaczynski, well, we can say at the end of that road, but with the same views. So in his political spectrum, the question of abortion is not really very important. It is a problem. It is some kind of trouble with which he must somehow deal but this is not a priority. This is not a question of children's lives. This is a, a problem which must be somehow solved and um, even better, not solved, but shuffled under the carpet. And this is exactly what has happened. I mean, the, uh, the question of the sentence of the Constitutional Tribunal, which is completely dependent on Kaczynski's will right now, um, was planned as a way to calm down Zbigniew Ziobro, who is a troublemaker within the camp of the United Right in Poland. And um, when Kaczynski decided that Constitutional Tribunal can um, uh, deal with this problem, with this subject, he probably thought that, well, there would be some fuss about it, but it, it won't really be very serious because he took that decision in summer um, when he did not realize, he could not uh, have realized what, um, the epi what course the epidemic would take and that the reaction of some circles in Poland would be so fierce. Um, so this was a completely pragmatic decision for him. The same thing about the Istanbul Convention sending it to constitutional tr tribunal is um, a kind of, again, shuffling it under the carpet, uh, because constitutional tribunal can deal with this problem and consider this problem and ponder this problem for months, if not for years. If you take a look at what actually happened with the, the abortion uh, question, uh, you would see that there was a group of PIS politicians who sent this question to Constitutional Tribunal um, 
in the previous term of the parliament. But in Poland, we have a rule that when a term of the parliament ends, also all the issues brought uh, up to tribunal by the deputies are just cancelled and they have to be put um, through the, the tribunal again in the new term. So the first, um, the first uh, uh, notion sent to tribunal by the PIS uh, deputies waited for a couple of years during the previous term of the parliament. And it, just, it was just cancelled before the elections uh, in October last year because there was no political decision of Kaczynski to deal with it. The next uh, very similar or even identical notion sent to the Constitutional Tribunal after the elections in 2019, well, it was decided by Kaczynski that yes, after the presidential elections, we can eventually deal with it so that we calm down the troubled situation within the United Right camp. So what I want to say is that not only PIS is not a, a conservative party, it is in fact a party focused more and more on the will of a single person and his, um, his will, his political preferences, his ideological preferences define what PIS in fact is. Um, of course, it is not always that he can subject everyone to his will. And in the past couple of months, for example, this was the case with, uh, as I said, five points for the animals. Uh, he found out uh, quite uncomfortably that there is a group, a quite considerable group of deputies within the PIS party who will not um, subject to his will, to his political will, uh, especially on the ideological issues, like the issues concerning animals or the issues concerning abortion. So uh, I think that uh, his one-man rule within the PIS party perhaps is coming to the end. Nevertheless, we have to understand, or you have to understand, that uh, what happens, for example, with the question of abortion in Poland is mostly an effect of Kaczynski's own preferences. I am, I understand. It's true that PIS is a party with a single, single person rule. Apart from that, we may see that not few conservatives be became deceived with the party along the last legislature. We could read some notes of concerns at conservative and traditionalist outlets like Polonia Christiana, as in many of the people who, who side with entities like Ortho Yuri, even, even people from the pro market side, some Volnovsk. MPA did not vote the same than this on some last legislature parliamentary voting on abortion. I mean, some Volnos MPA supported the abortion, while many PIS deputies treason the pro-life ma majority is also important to point out that 
many associations have been doing a courageous and very good job in the defense of unborn children without caring too much on partisan issues. For example, the Center of Family and Life, Pravo La Cicia, Ordo Iuris, Estobar Cicenit Coliver, Polish Monarchist Organization, and so, and so on. Now, I would like to address a thing that has some relation to the current city, to, well, to some current latest news. It's true that many Poles have not become too afraid of leftist minority pressure, which is also fueled by foreign institutions like the Brussels Europe, European institution, the new European Soviet Union, the foreign and transatlantic mainstream, and the open society. We have been able to witness how many Poles have put at risk the personal and physical integrity defending worthy places spontaneously despite of some indifference of the state and its police corps. That's the case of the so-called Stras, Na, Stras Narodova. Moreover, despite the continuous attempts of manipulation of public opinion that took place at this moment in the United States, we see that still the majority of Poles don't want to support what in reality is a genocide against unborn children. However, there's a side of Polish conservative and right-wing libertarian side that express such a concern because it could be that re recently not few young Poles could be switching to left-wing parties despite the fact that ago, more or less two or three years, the majority of them wanted to support a cookies and confederance being the only problem with peace, the fact of being socialist and economic. Many besides it was something amazing from people well for people from Spain where the majority of Jews sides with far left. Moreover, in, in Spain, the result that Bozak got at presidential elections would have been hard to imagine in the case of parties like Vox, which is at this moment the most relevant right-wing option for Spaniards. Moreover, neither PP is among the preferences of young people. In theory, it's a center-right party, but really, it's 
go along the same path that many EPP parties that is becoming a social democratic and progressive party. So, uh, well, they should have begun to support abortion, LGBTI totalitarianism, high economic interventionism, and the historical memory, among some other things. The current leader insists on a centrist liberal strategy. It's easy to compare Pablo Casado to Rafael Traskowski, a very social democratic and interventionist poli politician, despite the fact that in Spain the people who both PP don't come from the left, but from the right. Besides, in, in some of the most conservative areas of Spain, for example, in Madrid, PP has still more votes than votes. Nevertheless, my question is, whether in reality there's a risk for the conservative sociology in Poland looking at the young people segment. Looking at what, uh, once again? The electoral segment of young people. Um, this is not an easy question because we do not, we only can see some tendencies and we do not really know way, where they lead to. Uh, among those tendencies, there are a few like most people in Poland are definitely pro EU, although we don't really know where is the, uh, the threshold when the opinion, public opinion, can turn around and become more anti-EU. Nevertheless, still in Poland we have qu quite a high, one of the highest percentages in Europe of, uh, of support for the EU as an institution, as, and as in fact PIS is a, quite a pro-European uh, party. Of course, the Polish opposition has been constantly trying to present PIS as a Eurosceptic party at least, or even a party which has some kind of uh, unspoken deal with Moscow to uh, break up the European Union, but th this is nonsense. Jarosław Kaczyński is a pro-European politician and um, many things that PIS has been doing as far as the European Union is concerned were just for a show. If you take a look at some very important, important for European bureaucracy and the, the strongest European leaders issues, like for example, the question of climate policy, the PIS government uh, has supported the European climate policy with some very, very minor and in, and in fact unimportant caveats, like the date of reaching climate neutrality uh, by Poland, not 2050, but perhaps a little bit later. But in general, they have accepted it. And this is, if, if we take a look at the European landscape, this is definitely at one of the most important issues for Brussels, or perhaps even the most important one. So they have accepted it. They are really pro-European as I said, with some caveats, but not really very important ones. Um, another thing is the position of the Catholic Church here in Poland. And the Catholic Church here in Poland um, is in a very, very dire position. And it has found itself in this position, I would say, quite unexpectedly for the hierarchy of the, of the Catholic Church here. 
uh, a couple of years ago, because before I think the bishops thought they were exempt from the cases that uh, happened throughout the world, the cases of uh, um, abuse, sexual abuse of uh, children, of young people, homosexuality within the Catholic Church. They thought probably that Poland is a kind of, of, of uh, um, positive example um, on the background of, of cases like Ireland, for example, or the United States. And now it has found out, the hierarchy has found out that it is not, that in fact, these are the problems and the issues that um, started to bother the Polish Catholic Church too. Um, and uh, for that reason, I can't really say what is the, the future of young people as far as their participation um, in the church is concerned. We have seen definitely here in Poland some very, very um, troublesome tendencies and index indices as far as uh, the attitude of young people towards the Catholic Church is concerned. Um, falling participation in masses, uh, less and less people wanting to become uh, men, wanting to become priests, um, more and more hostility towards the clergy, um, and uh, a very, in my opinion, inadequate reaction on the part of the hierarchy, on the, of, of the bishops. Um, so um, the pessimistic version or the pessimistic um, uh, version of the future is that the participation and uh, will fall, uh, uh, will continue to fall and the attitude of young people towards the church will become worse and worse in the future. And this will, of course, also mean, naturally, that young people will become less and less conservative in their attitudes towards the state, towards family, towards each other, um, towards the values. Um, it does not have to happen this way, of course. Uh, perhaps... Uh, the church will find its way through those troubles, but judging by what we have seen so far, it is absolutely not certain. We can have that very bad version of, of, of the future. Um, another interesting thing is that you, you said something about, about uh, the Law and Justice Party being very... Um, caring about the past, about history, about traditions. The problem is that um, what they tried to do, uh, what they have been trying to do for the past five years, in my opinion, was so clumsy and um, usually so badly thought through that, in fact, the effect is the opposite. Let's take a look at what they did with the uh, so-called, um, with the soldiers or with the uh, partisans who fought communists after the Second World War here in Poland. We had um, a huge amount of people who went after 1944, 1945, who went to woods to fight communists throughout the 40s, even into the 50s. And uh, these were people whose memory was buried by the communists and was even buried in the 90s and was even buried in the first decade of the, of the 21st century. And it was spontaneously shown that part of our history by very involved, very um, emotionally attached to that subject, young people spontaneously uh, in the years 2000 and then after PIS uh, got power in uh, 2015 it started to use this subject politically as it's I would say kind of mythology 
But as I said, it was done in such a clumsy way. Um, it was so um, clumsily officially used, this subject, that it started to be boring for young people. So we have that very, very important part of our modern history, uh, those partisans fighting communists in the 40s and the 50s, but uh, being a part of an official ideology of the ruling party, this subject, as I said, uh, has become quite boring, quite uninteresting, officially used, and I think that they just uh, hurt the, that part of our history and that part of our, of our uh, um, national mythology uh, very badly. And probably quite a few young people um, are fed up with hearing about uh, those soldiers, those, those uh, partisans um, uh, from the woods, uh, because they, they think it is some kind of, of an official story, not really very interesting. And that's what, what they did. Um, so uh, if, if you ask me what the attitude, especially of the young people here in Poland, will be towards such things constituted our national values, conservative values, the values of our history, I would say that right now, uh, after five years of PIS rule, I'm quite pessimistic about it. I, I understand. Besides, it's true that only few bishops keep somehow resistant. That's the case of the Archbishop of Krakow, who dares to keep a politically incorrect speech. I refer to Mark Zezaselski. Now, after having got more details about the political nature of PIS, the current political situation of Poland, and the future outlook, we could finish the interview anyway as a Catholic Spaniard who highly appreciates a country like Poland, I want to encourage the Catholic majority to keep resistant against the revolutionary threat, to become, well, to keep as strong as it has been historically against communism and Nazi and Nazism. It's important to have a very proactive attitude, not only on the political partisan side, but also on the side of civil society, taking advantage of different means, physical, and virtual. Poles have been such an example for Western conservatives. At this moment, it's the most Catholic country in Europe. Ireland is not yet the exception in Western Europe. It couldn't escape to the cultural 
suicide. If Poland falls, the only hope could be fine in Hispanic American countries, especially Brazil and Argentina, where despite of the relevance of socialist politicians, there's a more and more strong pro-life movement whose demonstrations are very successful. For example, last Saturday. I will pray for Poland in defense of the God given natural order as in give my hand to cooperate whenever it could be necessary. Foreign cooperation is very important, not only because of the fact that some problems are not exclusive to specific nations. Once I said all this, unless you would like to add anything else, I only have to thank you for your interest and your participation at this nice conversation. Well, le let me just say one thing uh, 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 at the finish of this interview. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I did an interview with a former um, uh, chairman of the Polish uh, Sejm, uh, conservative Polish politicians, politician Marek Jurek, uh, who is not in an active politician right now, but who is still quite active as a, a columnist and a commentator. Um, and he said something quite interesting in that interview. He said that perhaps uh, Catholics in Poland should stop thinking about their position in this country as a, a guaranteed one. That they should perhaps start thinking about themselves being in minority, not majority. Because if they think about themselves as a minority, they will understand that they have to be more active, that they have to interest the uh, un-Catholic majority in what they say, in what their views are. They have to be agile. They have um, to have new ideas, to come up with new ideas. Uh, and he uh, gave an example of France, which is a, a completely laicist country, which is a uh, uh, a country even, I would say, hostile towards the faith and towards the church. Nevertheless, it has a very vivid Catholic minority. Um, so uh, I, would, uh, I would quote those, those uh, opinions of Marek Jurek as uh, perhaps a very, interesting, um, a very interesting blueprint for the future. And thank you very much for inviting me to this interview and all the best to you. The same to you. Good night. Dovichenia. Buenas noches.